Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, I'll show you how to make this custom select box that we had designed in one of our previous videos to work in an actual form. So we'll be basically getting the data from these custom select boxes and we'll be passing this to another page. And then you can easily go ahead and add this to your database. So if you want to learn how to create this from scratch, I have videos on that. You can check them out in the description below. And I also have the link of the source code in the description below so that you can just start from right here. And we'll be using PHP for this. So let's get started. So here we can see we have these video categories and we also have the option of searching for any of these categories. So if you just type science, we can see that uh, this search result is being displayed and we can select that and in the same way we can select different categories over here in different select boxes. So this is what we had designed in one of our previous videos. Now let me show you how to use this in a practical scene where you want to get the data out of this and store it in a database. So for this I'll be using PHP. For running PHP I'm using this software called XAMPP. So it contains of the Apache server, MariaDB, PHP and Perl. So just go ahead to apachefriends.org and download this tool called XAMPP. So it has versions for Windows, Linux and Mac. So just download the one for your system and just install it. Now keep track of where you are installing the software. And once you install it, you can find a folder called XAMPP and in that you can find a folder called stdocs which contains all the projects. So you can store all your projects over here. And then if you scroll down, we can find a file called XAMPP underscore start. Now to start this server, you can just double click on XAMPP.start. Once you started XAMPP, just go to your browser and type localhost. And uh, this is what you should see, a welcome screen for XAMPP. So if you see the screen, then it means that you have installed XAMPP correctly. Alright, so first of all, let me show you the finished version of our project. So this is the finished version. We have the video category and the platform. So we can select one from here and then we can select a platform from here. So let's select YouTube. And now if I click on upload, we can see that the category and the platform are displayed over here in the next page. So we can see that we have retrieved the information from our select box and passed it to this result.php file. Now once you get these values, you can easily store it in your database. So the first thing you need to do is download the source code if you haven't already done it. So just go to this link over here. I will leave the link in the description below and click on this code and then click on download zip. All right, our zip file has been downloaded. All right, I have copied my zip file into this stdocs folder where we have all the projects in XAMPP. So let me just extract this. And let me just rename this to select box. All right, this is our project. Now the first thing we'll do over here is uh, we will change the index.html to index.php. Alright, now this is a PHP file. Now we can go ahead and add our PHP code over here. So let's open this project in VS Code. So right click over here and click on open with code. And our project has been opened. Let's click on index.php. So this is our uh, index file. Now let's open our project in uh, our browser. So we'll type localhost slash the name of our project. So the name of the project is select box. Make sure we have the correct spelling. All right, this is our page. So first of all, we'll make some changes in our code. Now the first thing we'll do is we will add a form tag. So here we will type form and uh, in action we will type result.php and we need to create a file called result.php and in method we will type post All right so let's uh, remove this ending tag from here and uh, we will add it at the end of our form so here 
we will add the ending tag and uh, now let's delete the second and the third select box so we'll just delete the third one and for the second one we need to make some changes so the second one is called platform and we don't need to have so many options we just need to have Facebook YouTube and Vimeo so let's change these and uh, the next one is Facebook we'll also change it over here and then we have Vimeo and we'll delete all the other options and we also need to change this category to platform so the category name was for this one over here video category now we have platform so we need to change this so we'll select all the category by clicking ctrl D and uh, we'll just type platform and we'll also change the select the platform over here all right now let's go to our browser and see how it looks so we have the video category where we have all these categories and in the platform we have YouTube Facebook and Vimeo all right now the next thing we need to do is add a value attribute to all the options so the value attributes will help us get the value of these options to the second page so here just go ahead and add a new attribute called value and we'll just set it to each of these values so the first one is automobiles and then for the second one we will type value equals film and in the same way I will just add the value attributes to all the other options and we'll also add the value attributes over here in the second select box all right that's it with the value attributes now let's go ahead and add a submit button so here just before the form ends we will add an input of type submit and uh, we will give a value of upload and we'll also give it a class so that we can style it later all right now let's go back to our browser and uh, refresh and we can see that everything is all right now we need to style this button so i'll just quickly add some styles to our button so let's go to the style.css file and uh, let's create a comment button and uh, let's target the btn class and we'll set the font family to roboto i think we already set it over here yeah we already have the font family of roboto so let's set the font size to 16 pixels we'll set a padding of 8 pixels and 24 pixels we'll give a border radius of 8 pixels we'll give a margin top of 16 pixels we'll set the border to 0 and we'll set the background color to E74C3C and we'll set the color of the text to F5, F6, FA and we'll also set the cursor to pointer and let's see how it looks the styles are not being updated so if you have this issue then just go ahead and right click over here and click on inspect and then right click over here on reload and then click on empty cache and hard reload All right now we can see that the styles have been updated now when we click on this upload button we can see that the result.php file is not available so let's go ahead and create that file so just go over here and uh, click on new file and we'll just name it result.php and we'll just type result over here and uh, now let's click on the upload button and we can see that we are going to the result page now in our result page we want to show the category and the platform that was selected in our custom select box 
Now before going ahead with our code, let me just address an issue that we have with our styling. So let me first of all disable the styling and uh, we'll just add some random value over here. And now we can see the core HTML of our design. Now here the problem with our design is that uh, here we can see that we have this uh, text called select video category. This is what we see when we open the design. So let me just open this in a new tab. So this is the text that we see over here, select video category that is displayed over here. Now if you want to select automobiles and you click to a little bit right of uh, the option. So if you click right here, we can see that automobiles is selected over here. That is this uh, text. So if I click on automobiles on the right, we can see that it is being selected over here, but the actual radio button is not being selected. Now the problem is that if you don't have this radio button being selected, then we cannot get the value of this category in our PHP code. But now if I click on this label or this radio button, it works, but it doesn't work if you click to the right of any of these values. So we'll solve this issue by adding some CSS. So let's go back to our code and we'll go to style.css and we'll just remove this uh, one, two, three from here. Now the label tag doesn't have a display of block, so it doesn't have the full width. So let's go to style.css and we'll set the display of the label to block so that it will have the full width. And we'll also give it a padding of 12 pixels and 24 pixels. So let's go back to our design. And now we can see that our label has a width of 100% of the parent. So now we can click anywhere and uh, the radio button will be selected. Now let's remove the padding from the select box so that uh, we don't have this extra padding. So here we can see we have a padding of 12 pixels and 24 pixels for the select box. Let's remove that. Now we can see that the padding has gone. But we need the padding for this division called selected. So let's go ahead and uh, type selected. And for that, we'll give a padding of 12 pixels and 24 pixels. So now everything works all right. We have some issue with this uh, art over here. So let's go back and see what is the issue. Or oh, we have some problem with the double quotes. All right, so now it should work. All right, so everything is working all right. Now, even if we click on the right side of any of these options, the radio button will be selected. So now we are ready to add the PHP code to display our selected values in the next page. So let's go back to the result.php file and uh, let's start the PHP file by opening the PHP tag. So we'll type less than question mark PSP and uh, we'll create two variables. So the first one is called category and uh, initially we'll set it to none and then we'll have one more variable called platform and we'll set it to none as well. And first of all, we'll check whether the post method was used. So we'll type dollar sign underscore server and uh, in square brackets, we will type request underscore method. And we'll see whether it is equal to post. And whenever you send any value with this method of post, it is stored in a variable called dollar sign underscore post. So we'll check whether that variable is set. So for that, we'll type is set dollar underscore post. And here we have to give the name. So the name of the first one is called category. And we'll also make sure that it is not empty. So here we'll type ampersand ampersand exclamation empty and we'll type dollar sign underscore post category. Now, if this condition is fulfilled, then uh, we can store whatever value we get inside underscore post category to our category variable over here. So let's type category and we'll set it to dollar sign underscore post category. And we'll do the same with the platform variable as well. So we'll just copy this 
and paste it over here and we'll just change these categories to platform all right now the values are being stored in these variables now we just need to display them in our html so let's add the html code so we'll just type exclamation and press tab for this basic html5 boilerplate code and we also need to close the php tag over here so we'll type question mark greater than now in the body let's go ahead and create a new division with a class of container and we'll have two edge tools and uh, we'll type the selected category and we'll go into php mode and we'll just echo the variable over here so we'll type echo category and uh, i'll just duplicate this and uh, here we will type platform all right let me also add some styling to make it look a little bit better so i'll just add some internal styling over here so we'll just type style and uh, here first of all we will have a universal selector and uh, we'll set the margin to zero and uh, we'll target the container and we'll set the display to flex and uh, flex direction to column height of 100 viewport height align items to center justify content to center and uh, font family of roboto and let's also target the h2 and we'll type font size of 32 pixels color of the text to 2c3e50 text aligned to center and margin of 8 pixels and 0 all right so now let's see whether it works so let's refresh our page and uh, let's select a video category so we'll select music and for the platform we'll select facebook and let's click on the submit button and we can see the selected category is music and the selected platform is facebook let's go ahead and try it once more now we'll not select any category in video we'll just select a platform and uh, let's click on the submit button and we can see that the selected category is none and the selected platform is vimeo so that's basically it for this video i hope that you found this useful and if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and click on the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day